Hi, it's Dr. Clark here, and what we have on the screen in front of us is Lab Chart Reader on a Apple MacBook. Uh, this is the latest version of Lab Chart Reader. If I go to the help here, um, as you go to here and go about Lab Chart Reader, you can see it's version 7.3.4, which was the July 2012 release, which is the latest version of Lab Chart Reader 7. Um, that I got off the AD Instruments website this morning. Um, the intention of this little tutorial is just to show how we can recalibrate the um, spirometry flow and volume channels on a, uh, a recording that has been made previously in the laboratory using the spirometry pod. Um, bear in mind, apparently the lab chart reader software doesn't support the spirometry pod, so we're going to work without it in this instance, recalibrate the data and recreate the file that we had originally. Um, this is quite a complicated practical where we've got uh, CO2, O2, SpO2 uh, flow and volume from the spirometry pod, uh, blood pressure from a thinner press, uh, which wasn't working very well, um, heart rate from the thinner press, and then uh, a blank channel at the bottom. So for the purposes of this exercise, we're going to just hide all the channels we're not interested in just show the uh, volume and flow. Flow in pink at the top, you can see um, from the values, if I'm just going to drag this little window over there, you can see from these values that they're in voltages, of course flow isn't in voltage, and you can see from the volume measurements that in fact it is flat, there is no volume measured at all. Um, remember that the spirometry pod and the module that's installed does the calculations internally, therefore the voltages recorded are non-existent, they're just reading off the module which isn't installed, so it's just giving it a, a, a blank value. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that the pink data, the flow data, are calibrated properly. Um, because we did this experiment properly, we've got some calibration data here of 1 and 2 litres per second. So I'm just going to highlight those flow data, click on the drop-down list over here and choose unit conversion. Highlight the zero value here, and this is point number 1 as zero. Uh, this is going to be our 2 litres, so highlight a little section of the 2 litres, that is going to be 2 litres per second, so choose litres per second, and let's just put this to one decimal place, uh, make sure that's happy, yep we're happy with that, and press OK. So now our data here is calibrated, and as I move my cursor across, let's just zoom in on a very small section uh, used in the zoom window, and we can see here that the flow is now calibrated, and you see we've got in the scale bar here from 0 to 2 and then from 0 to minus 2 and here is our flow rate as the person's breathing in and out and you can see here it's clearly uh, calibrated now which is great so we'll close that mini window uh, this doesn't help us now with our flow with our volume sorry because our volume is still showing 0 volts the reason being is the volume is still trying to read off a non-existent pod and a non-existent module so we can click down on the volume drop box and we can choose integral because to work out the volume of gas that shifted with a given flow, when we've got the data for the flow, we can integrate it to give us the volume. So we click on the integral, and it brings up the standard integral uh, option box. The source of our data can be any one of our channels, but we want it to be channel 4, which is our flow, which we've just calibrated. We want to choose an integral a type of a standard integral. We don't want to just worry about positive or negative, so we're going to choose a standard integral. And there are some problems with drift, potentially, um, but we're going to choose that we're going to reset each cycle. So every time the pod, or the, every time the data goes back past the zero line, in other words, in theory the net movement of gas is, is zero, we're going to reset the integration. Um, you don't need to worry about any other settings except just to move the decimal places down to something sensible. So let's leave that on one, and then we press OK. So what we're expecting is while the vacuum cleaner was running, um, we should have an ever-increasing amount of volume being, um, being moved. And that's brilliant, because you can see here, while the vacuum cleaner was on at this point with a set flow rate, it was a linear increase in uh, volume. And you can see the units here are, are expressed as litres per second second, which is the same as litres. And we don't have the three litre syringe that we've used on this practical, the data aren't here, so I can't show you that it's calibrated correctly. But let's just look now at the data, so let's zoom in a little bit on the data and the software will uh, expand it for us there. And you can see now that we've got on the bottom here the integral showing volume. And if I just zoom in a little bit, during each, cardi um, each respiratory cycle, you can see here that there was a volume of gas moved uh, one litre. You can see here 0.9 litres, 0.9 litres, 0.7, etc, etc. Um, of course, 
these data just show absolute volume shifts. What we could do is we convert that to minute volume shift, um, which we can do by adding another channel. Um, but at the moment, let's just leave it at that. There is our data. Um, it shows quite clearly now we've got calibrated flow in liters per second and an integral showing us the uh, volume in liters.